Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Remember, subscribe is the vibe. Your boys on the road to 4K humbly. Oh. What's going on, fam? We got another one. We got the dumb narrative surrounded by... Yo, bro, I ain't gonna front. Before I get into this video, y'all y'all peep what's going on? Y'all peep what's going on out here? Your boy been doing his push-ups. We back to doing them push-ups, bro. We can't be out here seeing doing videos and getting fat. I'm out here bringing back that silverback gorilla strength. You hear me? But nonetheless, we got the dumb narrative surrounding LeBron James. But when it comes to LeBron James, bro, it's like... It's like, damn, my son can't do no right. If they're not bringing up the decision, they're bringing up him losing to the Mavericks, they're bringing up his finals NBA record. He goes to 10 straight finals. Oh, it was the least in conference finals. It's like everything you try to praise LeBron on, someone's always trying to diminish it as if the man is not an all-time great. Arguably the second best all-time, all-time. The worst thing that happened to LeBron was he came into the game around the birth of social media where, where, where the voices, opinions that didn't matter started mattering. You know what I mean? You toxic fans. You preteens who have your parents paying for your prepaid plan so you can write dumb shit on Twitter all day. That's what he's really a victim of. It's the fact that everybody's allowed to have an opinion on his greatness, where some of the old greats, the Magics, the Larrys, the Mikes, they didn't have to deal with social media. You know what I mean? They were able to live these mystical lives where you didn't see what went on off the court. But nonetheless, I honestly don't think you guys have any reason to hate this man. And I think when he walks away from the game, we're going to be sick, bro, because I don't know who's next. Zion? Zion who out here getting sent by women and, and, and Ja who can't put a fake pistol or a nerf gun down. I, I, but nonetheless, we got dumb narratives surrounding LeBron James. Hit the like and subscribe button. Let's rock out and see what this is all about, huh? LeBron James has been hyped up since before he stepped foot on an NBA floor. And 20 years later, as a 38-year-old, he's still being hyped up. Whether you hate the man or you love him, you got to admit, it's going to be sad the day when he's no longer playing in the NBA. I mean, not only on has now. he achieved outrageous success on the basketball court, but he's had an equally impressive off-the-court resume. Here, take a look at the tip of the iceberg. Come on now. He's a part owner of a soccer team, a part owner of a baseball team. Let me get he has a media way. company. Y'all see what's going on? Y'all see what's going on? 19-time NBA All-Star, 3 NBA All-Star Game MVP, 13 All-NBA First Team, 3-time NBA. Yo, come on, man. Come on, man. I'm getting counting mouth. I'm getting counting mouth. I might bite my tongue going through this resume, bro. Give the man his flowers. He got two, three years left. Just act like you respect his game because it's worth it. That produces movies for HBO and Netflix. He's built a school for kids, sent them to college, and the list can go on and on and on. Somehow, though, when the conversation of LeBron comes up, it's mostly always on some dumb narratives that don't make any sense. And I mean it. It's actually so crazy that I've actually decided to make a whole video on it. <laughs> Thank you. Cause I ain't had to just before we own. start this video, I just want to let you all know that we listened to your advice and got some sheesh t-shirts. <laughs> if you want to check them out and support the channel, the link's down below. And without further ado, was not born with a clutch gene. Not clutch. They're saying that LeBron James ain't clutch. But the players that got that clutch gene, yeah. they're going to go get that ball. For some reason, there's a narrative surrounding LeBron James that uh, he ain't clutch. I mean, whenever you hear the media talking about LeBron, they often say that he's good for the first 46 minutes of a game, but not the last two minutes because, uh, because he's not quote-unquote clutch. Off the ball. Lewis Come on gets it to LeBron Come on for now. three for the win. And with three seconds left, Cleveland triggers in. James, oh two seconds, God. one this second for the win. Three seconds to go. Throws up the floater. Oh, Yo, bro, y'all got to admit, the, the twi I think it was the 2017 or the 2019 Cavs, the one where he, where he had, like, no Kyrie and Kevin, like, bro, that's the year when Kyrie went to Boston and he had to carry George Hill, J.R. Smith, and a bunch of 69 overalls, and he got them through the finals by going, they were down 3-2 to Boston. And this is a young Tatum, a young Jalen Brown, young Marcus Smart, but Boston was the number one seed in the West. Uh, in the West. Boston was the number one seed in the East. They were down 3-2, and in a, this man not only forced a game seven, but he won a game seven in Boston with bombs. Come on now. But the only thing y'all remember is the fact that he got swept by a loaded, loaded, stacked, behemoth of a roster in Golden State. And y'all say, oh, well, if he was the GOAT, he should have won that series. And yeah, honestly, 
I can create a mixtape of his clutch shots and that video might be over 10 minutes long because look at this data I got off NBA.com. I went through every year of LeBron's entire career and out of his 20 year career so far, he's led the league in most clutch points three times and came in second twice. And uh, I'm not even gonna include all the times that he came in the top 10 because that'd literally be like half his career. Come on, so man. with these numbers in mind, how the heck can someone call LeBron, quote unquote, not clutch? That's basketball blasphemy at its highest. I mean, if you had to be truthful and just look at the pure numbers, he's actually in the conversation as one of the most clutch players of the last two decades for crying out loud. Sheesh, guys. Anyway, next up is the narrative that he can never be the GOAT because he's four for 10 in the NBA Finals. Sure, that can be seen as an asterisk on his career, but hey, even Jordan had a few bad asterisks on his resume. For example, did y'all know that MJ got swept twice in the first round? Yeah, in both 86 and 87, at the hands of Larry Bird and the Boston Celtics, Michael Jordan got swept two years in a row. Then, immediately after that, in three consecutive years, he was stopped by a team whose best player, was a six foot one point guard, Isaiah Thomas. Thomas! Sheesh, guys. Swept two years in a row, then stopped three years in a row by a six foot one guard? How come no one ever brings these up when discussing who's the GOAT? Selective amnesia. Anyway, back to LeBron. You know, a reason why he's four for 10 in the finals and not six for 10 is because he went up against arguably the best teams in NBA history, the 2017 and 2018 Golden State Warriors. I say it almost every other video, I find myself repeating myself. But for those that are new to this channel, that probably never heard me say this, I don't care what team you bring to the NBA Finals versus the Golden State Warriors with Kevin Durant, you know the roster by now. I don't need to go through the names, but I will anyway. Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, Iggy, Livingston, who else? Draymond, Steve Kerr coaching. Uh, yo, bro, you take any of the prolific greats in their prime, they're not seeing that team. They're just not. I don't care who I don't care who you want to put on Jordan and Scotty, all them. But they don't stand a chance. They don't stand a chance. I don't care. When you got three players capable of thirty and that could shoot the three ball, I'm sorry. MJ is just one man, and Scotty Pippen wasn't rolling out the bed dropping twenty five, like Kevin Durant. Like stop it. The Golden State Warriors with within that what three year era with Kevin Durant, the best NBA team ever put together, and that's over. Your 90s mag uh, your Magics, your 90s Lakers, your 80s Lakers, your 90s Bulls, Cleveland, Boston. I'm, okay. You can't find me a better roster than those guys on one team, man. Now, I ain't hating on Mike, and I'm not saying that LeBron is better than his airness, but I'm just pointing out that if you look at every NBA legend, there's always blemishes that you can nitpick. But it just seems that everyone chooses to highlight this aspect of LeBron's career while ignoring the asterisks on everyone else's. Anyway, moving on here. Another narrative surrounding LeBron James is that he quote unquote, doesn't have a bag. Well, he's definitely not a Kyrie Irving or a Kobe Bryant when it comes to having a bag, but to say that he does not have a bag is just ridiculous. I mean, just look at some of these. In this play here, he hits a ridiculous high fadeaway where the ball reaches the same height as the shot clock. Then in this play here, on, after splitting the double team, he spins on, to avoid the third defender Speed and lays move. it in. Come on, man. Then check out this play here. In the NBA Finals, he thing. shot fakes the defender oh. into the air, then lobs off it off the, the backboard for an alley hey. to himself. Sheesh, guys. How can anybody say this guy doesn't have a bag? That's just crazy talk. I mean, even at age 38, he's still adding new moves to his repertoire. Because look, I've literally never seen a move like this before, where a player runs along the baseline, then jumps and turns around midair for a fadeaway. Anyway, it is pretty clear that LeBron has an arsenal of moves that he can pull out at any time. He may not have the handles of an Uncle Drew or the footwork of a Black Mamba, but make no mistake, he has a deep bag. Moving on here, another narrative surrounding him is that he needs to move to a team in order to win. I mean, he couldn't win in his first stint with the Cavaliers, so he needed to go to Miami and team up with Wade and Bosch. Then when he couldn't win in Miami anymore, he moved back to the Cavaliers to team up with Kyrie and Love. 
Then when he couldn't win there anymore, he moved to Los Angeles and traded the whole team away for Anthony Davis. And while these are facts, let me bring up a few names for you. Larry Hughes, Zadrunas Ilgauskas, Drew Gooden, and Sasha Pavlovich. Have you ever heard of these players? The bums because he brought to I the have. NBA Finals at 23. The bums, the 69 overalls. You couldn't tell me Larry, maybe Larry Hughes, I'd give him like a 73. But Ugaskis, 69. Drew Gooden, I don't know what he was doing in the league, bro. Like, this dude looked like Udonis Haslam now. When he was playing in his prime, he looked like Haslam, bro. And Sasha Pavlovich. Well, except for Ugaskis, probably because he's a 7'3 giant, but honestly... Other than that, I don't know much about him. Anyway, uh, these are the four players that were with LeBron when he carried the Cavaliers to the 2007 Finals. There were no other All-Stars next to him, no All-NBA players, no Defensive Players of the Year, just role players. To win an NBA championship these days, except if you get lucky with injuries on the opposing team, you actually need legit stars on your team, and if your GM doesn't draft or trade for them, then what is a player supposed to do? Because look, the early 2000 Lakers had two of the top 10 players of all time. San Antonio had three All-NBA players, Golden State had four Hall of Famers, but LeBron had these guys in 07. I ain't trying to throw shade on these four players, but I'm just trying to point out the fact that LeBron didn't have the extra star power that's necessary to win it all, and that the Cavs GM and owner weren't helping him. Luka is just realizing this now too, that no matter how talented he is, that no matter how many points he puts up on the scoreboard, that he can't win with a bunch of role players, and that's exactly why Mark Cuban went out to acquire Kyrie. So while it's true that LeBron had to move in order to win, he actually just got the short end of the stick when it came to the GM and owner who were building the team. Anyway, the last and arguably the most ridiculous narrative surrounding LeBron James is that he's not one of the greatest scorers in NBA history. This is absolutely ridiculous and is something that I expect somebody like Ryan Hollins to say. <laughs> if you don't know who this guy is, watch some of his previous takes on ESPN and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Anyway, I'm not going to argue who's the number one scorer in NBA history, but to say that he's not one of the greatest scorers in NBA history is again, basketball blasphemy. I mean, he's now the leading scorer in the history of the regular season. He's the leading scorer in the history of the playoffs. He's averaging 27 points per game throughout his entire career, which is about the same as Kevin Durant, but yet he's not one of the greatest scorers in NBA history. Now, you could say that he's not one of the greatest shooters of all time, but scores? I don't even know how to respond to someone who says that. Anyway, what do you think about the narrative surrounding LeBron James? Do you think they're crazy, or would you back some of them up? Let me know your take in the comments section below, because I'd love to hear what you guys think. Yo, I mean, what more needs to be said? What more can I possibly add that you guys don't already know but choose to deny this man? For, for your own personal, you know what I mean? Just hateful energy, bro. Like, I'm one of those dudes. I, I respect greatness. I appreciate greatness. I don't believe you need to diminish somebody else's accolades in order to boost somebody else up. Like, a lot of you Jordan fans love doing. Love doing. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, if I had to rebuild the franchise, start from scratch, and you give me all the pro prolific players I've played since the beginning of time, give me LeBron James. I mean, uh, it, and again, just because I choose LeBron don't mean I'm knocking the other greats. It's just body of work, bro. 20 years averaging 27 points for 20 years for a man that got no bag, for a man that can't shoot. You know what I mean? For a man that can't pull up, for a man that's not clutch, averaging 27 points through the length of 20 years. Uh -huh. This is why I don't argue with fools, because from a distance, they can't tell who who. <laughs> who who? Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Let me know your thoughts. And I mean, obviously, y'all gonna hate because this is LeBron James after all. But it is what it is, man. Like, like your boy Gabos is back. And we bring more content. Appreciate you guys. Mamba out.